You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. You know, Rob, what should I do? About what? About a broken gimbal. A broken gimbal? Mm-hmm. Well, I know what I would do. What would you do? I would call the guys over at unmannedsas.com. Forward slash drone you. Forward slash drone you. Is that their name? <laughs> unmannedsas.com I believe forward slash drone you. Un- unmanned Systems and Solutions is the name of the company. That's right. But anyways, that's not where you're going to go. You're going to go to the website that we just told you about. If you've broken your drone, if your drone's just not working and you want somebody to look at it for you, go to their website, print out a label to send your drone over to them. $29.95 is all it's going to cost you to get it into them. If they end up fixing your drone, they're going to take $20 of that and they're going to give it right back to you to go towards fixing your drone. They're great guys, veterans. They're located here in the United States, so you don't have to send your drone overseas. If you got a DJI, for example, or a Unique, for example, don't send that thing to China and wait months, potentially. Keep it in-house, and within a couple of weeks, you're going to know uh, what it's going to take to fix your drone. Great guys over there. Give them a try if your drone's not working. Anyway, guys, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. It is Monday morning. We have had our coffee, and I am speaking fast. Yeah, so this <laughs> might go from a typical 15, 17-minute drone to a to 12. five. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully you'll get the same good information that helps you guys out. And by the way, if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com and get those questions in. We so appreciate that you guys sent them in, and never forget that if you're thinking it, so is somebody else. Definitely, they are thinking it. That means you should write it. The question I'm talking about. You just about. sounded like you should write it. Did you? <laughs> I don't know no, if you no. meant to do that. It's like there's a slight difference between like an Irish <laughs> accent and a New Mexican accent, like Irish accent, right? Like you should go to the website and take care of it. E. You should do it. And then like New Mexican, you should do it. <laughs> Grab your bag and do it. Your bag? Your bag. We're in Wisconsin now. Anyway, I know people will say bag here the way they do up north too. It's weird. But anyway, weird. we got a good question today. Thank you for joining us. Our heads are in the game. We are focused just like you should be on your business. Um, I just want to say quick congratulations to everyone who's been in my Freedom Journal group here at Drone U. So you guys know that Drone U is made up of members, of students essentially, and that you pay one low monthly fee to have access to all these courses. Well, we're going to be changing up some things coming up. And one thing that we've been doing is we really want to make sure that people are hitting their business goals, that they're actually doing the things that they set out to do. Because what would a drone training community be if it wasn't motivating and inspiring and holding you accountable? Which is what a recent testimonial that came in said, the whole the whole thing is worth a community for yeah. the amount of money right there. But what's important is that in this Freedom Journal group, these people that have kind of started off with me, most of them dropped out of the group. And I was really like worried, like, well, why did everyone drop out so fast? So what that? we started out with about 100... 83. Started out with 83. Hmm. That's how many people wrote in the Excel sheet, the original one, oh, what their okay, goals were. because the, the initial registrations we got were about 100. So yeah, I think, there was even a drop off from registering and then actually putting their goal in. Well, that's what how that's what happens because people get distracted and they never reach their goals, which is one of the, the point of doing yeah. this group. And, you know, people were like, Paul, I love this. I love that you're doing this inside the community. Well, most of these people have dropped off, Rob, because they already reached their goals. Oh, is that and what we're you not out? even to a hundred days yet. Yeah. Oh, that's not, that's cool. Yeah. So, there, so there's a couple things going on there, though. If you're setting goals, you want to make sure they're not too easy to achieve. Exactly, but they also have to be relevant. They do all things that we talk about. Well, we're going to be launching a new kind of layer of membership. We've talked about it. We don't know when. Don't quote me. Rob's already. Please don't email me. <laughs> but what it's going to be is think of it more like a mastermind group where you'll have access to call me, which right now I have been limiting access more and more and more. Um, out of necessity, mind of, you. Yes, I mean, just for scalability. In fairness, yep. Um, but also, you're going to have access to these groups that are monthly meetings, they're weekly meetings on reaching your goals, they're business-oriented, they're marketing-oriented, so if you need to work on certain parts of your business, you're going to be able to do that. Um, and it's really for the serious people, the people who are like, hey, I'm taking my business to the next level. So, Which we have a lot of. 
Yeah, I know. We really do. Which is why this is necessary. Yeah. Because people have questions. They want to spend an hour or so on the phone with me, and I just can't do that mm. anymore. It's just it, it's just not possible. Well, and the so. thing is, there are a lot of other worthy people to be sort of, for lack of a better way to say it, in your shoes. True. Very knowledgeable, well-rounded, experienced. Frankly, a lot of people with quite a bit more experience even, just in terms of life and business, not necessarily in the drone world, but... A lot of very qualified people out there that could be helping other people. And they're willing to do that. They want to do that. Definitely, which is why Drone U is growing too, yeah. which I want to welcome Keenan Newton kind of onto the team. He's going to be developing a new part of Drone U. Very excited about that. He's a smart guy. Very smart. Um, so Keenan, congrats, bud. Welcome. Um, the Drone U instructors, well, the instructor group is actually going to be growing significantly in July. Mm -hmm. There will be a test. Can you outwit? outsmart and outfly the competition to be an instructor at drone you yeah <laughs> oh man it's gonna be a lot of fun let's get to the question we're talking too much here everyone's like hey well we just want to give you an update what's going on with drone you is our chance to talk to you without you talking back don't we all wish we could have that <laughs> with certain people in our lives <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit play this now. This weekend after meeting that guy at Lowe's, who because I talk about Sarah on the podcast, and then he met Sarah's mom right there, and he like started to smile slash, you know, me, anyways, started That's to laugh, funny. and I was like, I got to be careful what I say about totally. Sarah on the show. Yeah, we might want to make sure we do a little more editing. Yeah. All right, here's the question. Hi, this is Ryan from Pennsylvania. I recently just passed my Part 107 exam, thanks uh, in part to you guys and Drone U for the training. I appreciate the podcast. My question is how long it takes to get back your certification. I submitted an application with the IACRA, and that was over 35 days ago. When I log in to their portal, the current status is received by registry. So I'm just wondering what the usual wait time is on that, uh, what uh, user are seeing for that. Thanks. So thank you for the question, Ryan. Really do appreciate it. And we thought we'd take this opportunity to go a little bit deeper into the process because while there are tens of thousands of 107 certificate holders right now, still a lot of people that are just learning about it even. Totally. And in fact, we just got an update recently, you know, just I think a few days ago, we put out a podcast talking about, you know, how many pilots have become uh, essentially licensed through the FAA. And that number, according to what the FAA said at the UAS symposium in Reston, Virginia this morning, that number has gone from about 20,000 to, according to them, 37,000. Well, so that's as of this morning. That's as of this morning. So Very cool. To answer his question, he's asking about, you know, I've waited for so long. When can I go out and fly? You should be able to download your temporary certificate within like a week or two. Um, if you have already applied for a background check for another pilot's license, you can get your uh, temporary certificate in up to 48 hours. That's how long it took for me because I was in the process of getting a different FAA license. So I'd already had the TSA background check. Mm -hmm. It was already in my IACRA profile. So I got it back in 48 hours. Is but, IACRA where you're always handling this stuff? That's where you go yes, to do this? Yes. So okay. in fact, we're going to go over the exact how-to process to get your drone license in this show to give people a better uh, rounded idea of exactly what you need to do, some tips and tricks therein. But to answer his question just right away to the point, you know, it can take up to 90 days to get the, what is it called? The actual the card. The actual card, mm -hmm. which it, I think for me it was like 88 days. Like it was literally like a few days before 90. Um, but to get his temporary certificate, you should be able to go into IACRA about two weeks after applying, which in the application it says, you know, provide your written exam test pass ID. So you put that in IACRA, mm -hmm. you put the application through. About two weeks later, you should be able to print out your temporary certificate. And as long as you have that and your registration and you follow all parts of 107, you should be good to fly. You're flying legally at that You're, point. That is correct. Okay. Yes. You just don't have the fancy schmancy little card yet. Yeah. And a lot of people know, you know, how do you obtain your remote pilot certificate? Well, you've got to pass the remote pilot knowledge exam. That's at a CATS center. So CATS is a federally certified testing center. Um, sometimes they're held at aviation schools. Sometimes they're held in different areas. Once you pass that, you take the application of, you know, hey, it's online. So you go to IACRA 
I A C R A. In fact, let me just get the website really quick. I've got it here. Okay, hit me with it. What you just said, iacra.faa.gov. Boom. Now, you're going to want to make sure you write down your credentials to log into IACRA because you're going to have to deal with this BS every two years if you guys remember all of that fun stuff from the test. So the next thing, once you put the application to IACRA, you pass the test, you get that little form that says you passed, you put that number in the application, you send it off. TSA is then, then going to do a background check and you will receive your temporary certificate again and then you'll get your permanent certificate in the mail and then every two years you gotta go through this process again. Now, if you already have a manned pilot's license, all you have to do is take the free online training course from the FAA, submit your application on IACRA, and receive your remote pilot certificate electronically. Uh, so it's a little bit different. It's a lot easier. A lot of drone pilots have said it's kind of BS that manned pilots have to go through this PowerPoint and then get 100% and they're just mailed a certificate because it doesn't really say how to fly. It doesn't really teach you, you know, the practical aspect. And a lot of people are asking for a practical test for these drone pilots. Um, so who can take the remote pilot exam? You must be 16 years or older. You must be able to read, speak, write, and understand English and be in a physical or mental condition to safely operate any UAS, but also pass the aeronautical knowledge exam. This sounds boring, right? Here's the thing. Important stuff. It is important. Here's the thing. Once, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, how long does it, how long is it going to take me to pass? Some people, if you're able to hyper-focus, you can knock this out in a week. If you're studying for, say, six, seven hours a day, you have no aeronautical background, you have n n no information mm -hmm. whatsoever, seven days, one week. I get that question a lot to the support email. Using your materials, how long should it take me to study? And the thing is, it really depends on the person and what their background is. But you're right. I typically will say a couple of weeks just to buffer it a little bit. But if someone's putting that much focus on it, that's possible. Yeah, and a lot of people do you normally take care of it in two weeks if they're doing nights and weekends. And, yeah. and I think that's pretty attainable. I've heard some people say it took them four weeks on just doing a couple things per day. I don't really recommend that. You know... Uh, it's funny because a lot of people have said, Paul, have you been in some of the other new Facebook groups? A lot of people are really pushing Remote Pilot 101, and I'm like, no, that's cool. But that's all they have. That That's the only course they have. If you want to learn how to get your Part 107 certificate, look, DroneU has a study guide. DroneU has a filmed course. Now DroneU has a modulized course that's just like Remote Pilot 101. But here's the thing, Remote Pilot 101, for the cost, you're only getting one class. What Remote Pilot 101 doesn't have is a community. It doesn't have a place where you can ask questions, where you can get instantaneous answers from experienced professionals. Also with DroneU, the cost is half, and you get access to all of our other classes. So, By the way, there's a lot of information about the test and what made other members successful in that community. Boom. And that's great. I mean, you go in there and you just search part 107 or 107 or whatever, and you're going to see a lot of threads about people say, hey, I didn't think this would be on there, and it was, or make sure you remember to think about this before you take the test, and a lot of yeah. tips like that that were really, really helpful. And the thing is, is that Remote Pilot 101 just ends, you know, with part 107. Here's the thing. If you want to be able to fly at night, if you want to ever be able to fly over people, if you ever want to get some sort of waiver or authorization to fly in some airspace, you're not going to find that information over there. Yeah. You, you know, you're going to be able to get it here. And that's the beautiful part is that we've got so many people working together on building this information. And even recently this weekend, I hired one of our interns to go work on getting drone law for every country in the world. And I was showing him other things that were on the internet from UAV coach from these other places. And most of the information was actually wrong hmm. it was just up there for like keyword sake like uh drone information like dominican republic blah blah blah, blah. and you you go in there and the information is so old it's outdated it's useless right and the thing with drone you the difference between us and everyone else is that we live this life we are experienced we actually have businesses where we go out and do drone work it's not just some young kids sitting behind a desk saying i know how to do this when all they do is train. They don't actually do. And if you go ahead. Well, I was just sorry. I keep going <gasps> like I'm going to try and interrupt you. But one of the, the one of the ways I think about this, because I think it's really important. We didn't plan on getting into this. So no, thank sorry. you for listening to this unless you're already gone. But um, there's a big difference between somebody who is really good at the Internet, per se, and is curating information 
that makes them look like a drone pilot and, and, and therefore training versus someone who are drone people who fly drones for business to make money and then have turned that into let's educate other people on how to do that. Because we want to, because we want people to be able to fly, do it safely and not have liability. You know, here's the thing. If you want to start a business and you just want to get the part 107 certificate because it's just an obstacle in the way, go to Remote Pilot 101 because we don't want you. We want people... Well, I, I don't know if I'd be that harsh, but go ahead. We want people who are focused on really creating the lifestyle of living the drone life. They really want to curate a business that limits liability, limits risk. You have the utmost fun while having the least amount of worry and the most amount of confidence. And I don't mean over like overconfidence. I just mean confidence where you're able to go into any situation where someone wants you to do a cinematic move through a flying obstacle and you're like, all right, I got that. As long as I can do this, 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 and this, mm -hmm. you know, it's going into any situation and having that confidence. You go to these School, these other online schools, and you just learn how to get your certificate. You don't learn to overcome the other obstacles, the other hurdles. You don't understand that there is a crazy amount of liability in doing oil and gas inspections versus doing something like real estate, small commercial productions, or let's say like car dealerships and golf courses, you know? Right. So it's that deeper level of information that you'll get with us. And sorry, I'm going on a rant. I'm just tired of seeing all this other crap where people are like this, that, and the other. It's like, unless you really know the systems, you you have the experience, you've built a business. I don't really care what you say because experience will always trump theory, in my opinion. That's all I have to say. Mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> 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 and I'm sure people are saying, all right, please drop the mic. But thank you for listening. Like, Shut up, Paul. Anything else? The one thing that I was wondering, and I don't know if you found this out, and it's a question that we've gotten is, for example, I have the TSA pre-check, so flying and taking that line. Does that not count? I don't think it does. I think these are run through two lame. separate departments. I was thinking the same thing. Remember I asked you earlier, like, oh, I did my FAA uh, T TSA background check. Can right. I just go right into pre-check? And it was like, no. Which is insane, but it, it is what it is. It, it's not, though, because it's the reality of government. Their systems well, do not intertwine the reality of government is insane, then. and <laughs> communicate with one another for the best efficient outcome. Yeah, it is our world. So I won't complain about it. I just want to make sure that uh, that's as far as we know, that is the situation. Yes. All right. So once cool. you've done your 1072, while you're studying, while you're waiting for that temporary certificate, start a business plan, figure out how you're going to get insured, figure out which waivers you're going to go for, figure out what airports you're going to apply to have very specific access to airspace consistently so that you can actually go out and network with people and say, look, I've already got an airspace authorization to fly in this area to service your business. And I know no one else has that. That's why you should choose me. What's going to be your competitive advantage? Is it going to be, you're going to be the best pilot ever? You're going to be the best at one particular niche? What is it going to be? You need to ask yourself that question if you're going to be serious. Absolutely. So, and I know some people on the internet are going to troll me for being so serious, but I want to give someone who is legitimately looking to start a business, change their lifestyle, better themselves, quit the BS nine to five lifestyle that encapsulate so many people and give them the real, this is the, the dirty D. This is the knowledge you need to know in order to grow. We should coin that. All right. On that note. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs>